can I ask a question to you too? Because you guys had had C-section, so you guys get this. Did you guys do anything differently after you went home um, with your kids that kind of would be more of what you would do for having a, you've had surgery. So you're having your baby, you're feeding your baby, you're moving around all stuff. Would you say that things that maybe you tweaked or did certain things a little bit differently just because it's a C-section baby, because you got to kind of watch more of a sensitive area? Uh, one thing is I did breastfeed both babies. And let me tell you, a pillow is really really useful. It supports the baby, it gets the baby at the right height, and it keeps the baby from ever pushing directly on that portion of your anatomy that has just been cut open and put back together again. It's just, yeah, you want to, yeah, you're, you're, you're careful of that area, and it's a really bad idea to do any twisting motions until it's healed up a bit. So, yeah, that's what I would say. I slept downstairs. So in my, I had two different houses that I lived in with my two different, but I had moved by the time I had my second baby. And the first one, my bedroom was upstairs in like a, a big flight of stairs. I had a first floor bedroom in my second house. Um, with my first, I slept downstairs. So I had the baby in a bassinet downstairs with me so that I was in close proximity and I did not move up to my bedroom for a couple. Now it, it was just something for me. I was uncomfortable no matter where I slept. So I actually was sleeping on like a couch, which again is, pre but, and I had pillows all around me to try to, I was really kind of just uncomfortable. So I'm a stomach sleeper. I was, that's the one thing I was real bummed about with my C-sections because my whole pregnancy, I was like, so soon I'm going to get to sleep on my stomach again. And then nope, not for a while. Because <laughs> So, you know, sleep was just uncomfortable. The adjusting, I'm like a tossing and turning type sleeper anyways. Um, and so I, but this, my feet were so kind of swollen and stuff after my C-section and the stairs just felt really uncomfortable to walk up and down repeatedly. So I stayed downstairs for, so that was something personally I did not for everybody. Some people it might be like, you know what, I'm going to get up those stairs into my bed and then I'm going to just try to stay upstairs as much as possible. Or maybe the stairs don't bother you that much for me. They did. So one change that was something personally I did was just stay on the first floor for a bit because it was more comfortable to me. But I would say whatever you have to do to try to make your sleep situation comfortable, make sure you're still maintaining safe sleep for your baby so that no matter what, that the baby is, you know, in following all the <laughs> safe sleep in their own space in a bassinet, no, you know, blankets or, you know, a safe, safe sleep approved type thing. So I would say doing all of that, making sure that you're not doing that, but making sure that you're in a comfortable as much as possible sleep environment, knowing that you're still going to have to probably get up with baby and everything like that. So that was one thing I did. Um, and I had, um, like a, a diaper changing, I had little diaper changing stations kind of all over. I did things too. I had little diaper changing stations all over the place that were just close proximity that I didn't have to like bend too much or, you know, that were really on a level that was comfortable. And, um, I really found, I knew better the second time. So the first time when I got home, I found myself feeling really, really weak and woozy all the time. I just realized for like the breastfeeding I was doing and the surgery I was recovering from, I was not eating consistently or nearly enough. I was just honestly for a while. And so this, I should say, I'm somebody who has no problem eating. I love food and I eat all the time. So I've never been one of those people that like forgets to eat, you know, I probably be better if it was, but I'm not. So I've never struggled with forgetting to eat or any of those things, but I really didn't feel, I think with the surgery and like, you know, in all honesty, you're not very regular again, right after surgery, you'll find like, you're not going to the bathroom as frequently. That's like a normal thing. Um, I really wasn't feeling like eating a lot, but your body still needs to eat. So I, the second time around was aware of that. 
I really tried to drink a lot of fluids and, um, a friend had told me, she said, just leave, like have little snacks, like all around you. So that, cause if you're really like finally comfortable after having it, you don't, or you're holding the baby, you might not get up. So I had little, like, so I had diaper changing stations and I had snack stations everywhere. And I just snacked more often and felt better. I felt so much better the second time when I was eating more regularly is, and, and reminding myself to do it because the first time I really just wasn't feeling like eating a lot. So I wasn't eating enough. And I felt, I just remember feeling really yuck all of a sudden, just weak and, and, and kind of under the weather is the only way I could. And, and it was, it was like the not eating that was getting to me. So that was be mine. Yeah, I have to agree. Cause I kind of, I kind of did similar stuff to you actually. Uh, I think my my sleep was a little bit more comfortable and I'm a kind of a belly sleeper too. Um, because what happened was the first time around I got in, introduced to a belly binder and I noticed when I first would take it off, cause I was like, I don't want all this stuff on. I felt like jello and I didn't feel very, I just kind of felt really like it wasn't my body anymore. So when I wore it and I wore it properly, by the way, there is a difference between putting it on and wearing it the right way. Um, I could actually sleep because my body, it, it seemed to kind of almost like compress the incision area. And I felt really comfortable enough to sleep. Um, so the second time around, I was like smarter about it because I knew from the hospital one they gave me, I have a short torso. And so the, the ones that they give you was like, literally it's like, <laughs> like, it's like this giant size thing that like pretty much covers like from like my thighs to like, like my armpit, like it's, they're big, they're really. Big. And so I was like, okay, I'll wear that one in the hospital. And I bought, um, I bought a shorter one more for like my torso for at home. And I was so glad I did. Cause I wore the hospital one for a little while. And then a little while later, I put the other one on. That's more like my my size for my build. And that, that helps me a lot because of, it just kind of made me feel like I was myself, like kept me back together. Um, I did get one of those boppy pillows for feeding. Um, and I loved that thing. That thing was awesome because you just put it up, like it goes around you, you put your baby in whatever, like little position. And that thing is so cool. I, I was like, man, like this, this is such an easy invention. Cause it's literally like a pillow that just wraps around you and it's super comfortable. And so I had that thing. We had like our little setup of where we would like be feeding and doing all this stuff. And I always tell people warning of like, don't let your baby sleep on the boppy pillow. Like, I don't know, like it's, it's just not safe. They're not they're not a regular pillow anyways, but it's, it's just not safe. Your baby falls asleep, put your baby in their, their bed. Like, um, but, but that, that boppy pillow was like the best thing ever. Like, I just, I can't even tell you, it was just the best for feeding. I didn't have any problems of him kicking me or hitting me or doing anything or just, you know, stretching or anything. It was just like, it worked. And I had a little bassinet, which seemed to be easier because the crib is so big, putting your baby way down in the crib. So it was kind of nice, like right afterward to have your baby, like right here in the bassinet, <laughs> like, you know, and, and it was nice. I did put my bed down. I have a giant bed. And so we took like the bottom, whatever thing that holds it up. We took that down. So it's just the mattress on the floor. And that helped me a lot because I could get up in my bed, which I think I put that down well before we ever had baby. And I was like, do not put that back up for a while because it takes a little bit to like, you know, like I was like, no, just yeah. leave it down, leave it on the floor. I'd rather just sleep on the floor. It's more comfortable than trying to like climb a bed. But, um, and I, I got, I was told by a bunch of other, um, more experienced moms, you got to make sure you're eating since you're breastfeeding. And so I did the same. I had like snack bars and granola and like, you know, all these things and like these little areas. And I had like diaper caddy things all mm -hmm. over the place with like little, yes. like changing pad areas all over my house. Like my house was like, my house is baby house. Like I was like as comfortable as possible. There was wipes and diapers and like spit up rags. Like, you know, I was like, I'm not hardly moving anywhere. <laughs> I wanted as easy access as possible. So I did, I had a little, um, in the bedroom, we did have one of those changing station things because it came with like a crib pack. And so that was nice. And right up at the front, like here's everything right there. Here's your wipes, here's your diapers. You don't have to bend. You don't have to do anything. It's all at that perfect level of like, you're just standing there. And then in like, you know, in the other rooms too, I just had like a little pad 
like little padded area on the floor with with the little caddy of diapers and all this stuff and and that was like that was how we kind of how we did things and I um it made it a lot easier when you're especially when you're by yourself <laughs> and and yes definitely make sure your kid like don't fall asleep with your kid in the chair don't get too comfortable like if you s- make sure you're getting sleep I think they say what you need to get like four hours which when you first have a baby, nobody's getting four hours of immediate sleep because you're feeding your kids so many times throughout the night. And it's, yeah. But when you start getting into more of a pattern, sleep as much as possible, (laughs) sleep when your kid sleeps, if you can't, but, um, but yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's pretty much what we did was bassinet, uh, snacks everywhere, easy access to doing stuff trying not to strain myself too much doing things following don't go running go back right into like exercise and doing all the stuff and like and even if they do say yes you can go back to this or this or if you don't feel like it don't do it like you know that's another thing is don't stress yourself out and push yourself to the limit if if your body doesn't feel ready something that i think megan just brought up was you are not regular after you have a baby, I learned the first time around from my emergency C-section that I was not planned for anything was um, going to the bathroom after you have a C-section. Having a bowel movement was terrible. It was horrible. And I didn't get any help for it. And I was like, when I got pregnant the next time, I was like, I will never do that again. I don't ever want to. It was just a terrible experience. And I was like, nope, I'm not doing that. So I asked my doctor about this and she said, um, okay, we're planning your C-section. So a few days before you can start taking a stool softener. And then if you need to, after C-section, take a stool softener for a couple of days, few days, you know, whatever. And I, everything, by the way, I checked everything with my doctor. Don't just randomly take whatever somebody tells you on the internet to take, because I know they have their suggestions. If you ask somebody about this, we know it's there, but, uh, I went through her and she said, yeah, just take this and do your normal stuff, whatever. And sure enough, she was right. And I was completely happy, but they do give you with a C-section, they'll give you the little stool softener things after your surgery and stuff like that, like that day and the next day or whatever, while you're in the hospital. Um, but I was right. I did what she felt. And I was like, this was the best thing ever because, uh, I had no issues in the hospital. I had no issues after we went home. And I was like, I'm so glad I brought this up with my doctor because it just made such a world of a difference. And I wasn't like miserable. Cause I was the first time around. I was like, Oh no, this, I was like, I get it. Why people don't like C-sections. This sucks. And then later on talking to my doctor when I, she was like, why didn't anybody tell you that? I was like, nobody told me anything and I didn't know anything. So I didn't know to go get a stool softener to take care of any business going on like afterwards or whatever. But I started before for my plans and then took a little, and then I was, I was good. I went back to, I went back to a a more normal thing after that, but that was huge. That made a huge world of difference. Yeah. Here's where the opioids come in. The opioids, okay, your colon extracts moisture from your stool. So otherwise you'd have perennial diarrhea and be dehydrated. So that's bad. So good stool, good colon, yay, you. Um, The opioids slow down the progress of your stool through your colon. It gives it more time to extract moisture. So being on opioid medication causes you to have very dry, hard stools. Now, people may say, oh, if you're, if you're constipated, you need more fiber. No, because the combination of that with opioids means that you have larger, harder, dry stools. So bigger bricks to shit. So that's not going to work. What stool softeners do is they're basically, they absorb moisture and they hold onto it. So as your stool passes through the colon slowly because of the opioids, 
it can't extract as much moisture. Your stools say softer and moister, and they're so much easier to pass. Once you stop taking your opioids, everything's fine. You can go back to normal. It's great. But yeah, I didn't understand, and they offered me the stool softeners. I go like, oh, I've never had a problem with constipation. I don't need that. I'll stick with my prune juice and oatmeal, and those will do the job for me. Well, they didn't. <laughs> it was a nice thought, but I did not count account for the pain meds I was on. So the pain meds caused the constipation and I was trying the wrong thing to remedy them. Yeah, I did have to pass a couple of uncomfortable stools. It was not fun and I would prefer not to do it again. <laughs> so your choices are either A, don't use opioid meds for pain control or B, use stool softeners under the guidance of your, your doctor to help you out so and then it was kind of fun because i went on the internet and took a look and i was like oh yeah people who are are chronic pain um and have to be on opioid meds to control it know all about this i was like okay cool <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, didn't know, I didn't know that so i'm glad that you said that because that makes complete it makes complete sense actually like yeah when i asked her because i was like what can i do because i don't want to deal with that and then i see people online saying stuff like take magnesium and take and i'm like do not and i'm like i tell people do not take anything without talking to your doctor because everyone is different and everyone has different things going on and your doctor knows what you're taking what you're going to be taking they know all that stuff don't take some random crap that people tell you online even if it's just a vitamin you really don't know and it's like stool softeners are safe to take while pregnant and you know and going through all this stuff but you still need to check with your doctor check, just check with your they'll doctor. tell you like you know yeah so what magnesium does it, it's kind of fun in its own little way is magnesium essentially it doesn't work on the colon it works on your basically small intestine is it attracts water into your gi tract but up much higher so what the magnesium does is essentially it's kind of like a fluid bolus in your small intestine that pushes on whatever's in your colon so it's kind of like um like not a water blaster but basically yeah it basically brings which is why when they tell you to when you're taking magnesium citrate or whatever to help move things along they're like drink plenty of water because it's the water that does the job water blaster it can basically. also it's a water blaster yeah it can give you diarrhea so this is why yeah one know what you're doing two check to see if this is right for you with your doctor and your doctor may say oh you have something going on that requires different approach like maybe you need to come see me about what's happening with your life and then we'll exactly. sort things out and then we'll get things right for you because a lot of times you can end up in a perennial cycle of things going wrong and you trying to fix things but you're not fixing the right problem ask yeah. the right questions you'll get better answers that way because um, i don't think many people talk about the bathroom thing very often c-section people do a little bit more than other people but it's like but a lot of people don't want to and i don't think they want to go talk to their doctor but it's like that's who you need to talk to about it like you know like you got to talk to your doctor more than anyone else about it because well, they just know call, just body. call the office <laughs> have people you don't have to do a face to face these days exactly exactly and, and they've heard it a million times before that's the one thing i always say about specialists is this is someone who does this every day you're like I've never run into this problem before. What do I do? And they're like, oh, that? Yeah, I know that. <laughs> Probably got three phone calls this week on that. This is what you do, A, B, C. Send you on your merry way and you're like, one, you'll get the right answer. And two, you will know that you actually check with someone who knows as opposed to your internet randos who may have some very interesting 
takes on the situation. <laughs> yes. So extremely terribly true. I like the stuff that I see sometimes is some things I can, I'm like, okay. And then some things I'm like, why, why even say anything? Just don't say anything. If your, your answer is going to be so like extreme where I'm like, no, just don't, don't say nothing. It's, it's bad. I've seen such bad things online that I'm like, oh my gosh, like it's so terrible. And I just hope people don't listen to any of that bad, bad advice. Like, uh. well, I mean, some of the advice is so um, bizarre that you're, you're trying to figure out what you should reply. And one of them is, you actually try this. And then you really don't want to know the answer to that question. And so you just kind of ignore it and suggest something that is accessible and plausible and hopefully people will say oh that seems reasonable i'll try that and we'll ignore the i don't know what eat 10 prunes and stand on your head in this during the noonday hour or something i don't know <laughs> it's true no it's true that's what it is too they always have these weird like and yes people do say stand on your head I see that more than I want to say. And I just think, I cannot imagine being pregnant and standing on your head. Like I, I just, I can't, I can't in any way even imagine how to stand on your head when you're pregnant. Like, I just, I just can't, but they're like, that's how my baby came out or whatever. And I'm like, no, that's not how you choose your baby. To come. Like you shook it the wrong way. And then suddenly your baby's like, I'd like to come out now because it's bad in here. <laughs> Mom, I'm being tortured. I'd like it to all end right now. 